So we've spent some time talking about the idea of squares and square roots and how a square root is related to the area of a square. And today we're going to move on to right triangles. And so a right triangle is a special kind of triangle that has a 90 degree angle in it. Now this 90 degree angle could be on any of the three corners and it would still be a right triangle. The part that is the part of the triangle that is opposite of the right angle. So if you were, for instance, if this was a room and you were standing in the corner looking across the room, you would see that the piece across from you is called, one moment, the hypotenuse. Now, again, this is going to be true for any right triangle that if you are standing in the corner, looking across the room, that part of the triangle is going to be the hypotenuse. The two parts that you could reach out and touch with your arms if you were standing in the corner are called the legs of a triangle. And so we are always going to have a hypotenuse and two legs on any right triangle. So we're going to be asked here to identify the legs and put an L for leg and H for hypotenuse. So we can see here in this diagram, the right triangle is right there. The right, tri the right angle is right there, right there, and right there. So we will put ourselves standing in those corners, recognizing that when we look across the room, what we see is the hypotenuse. And so the hypotenuse is going to be what I'm looking across at. And I could reach out and touch with my arms from the corner the two legs. And again, looking across at the hypotenuse and re being able to reach out and touch the two legs. And this one oriented a little bit differently, looking across, that's the hypotenuse, reaching out and touching the two legs. And then lastly, looking across to the hypotenuse and being able to reach out and touch the two legs. So it doesn't matter how a triangle is oriented. You're always thinking about if I was standing in the right angle corner, I'm looking across at the hypotenuse and I would be able to reach out and touch the legs. So another way that mathematicians do this is instead of just being HLL, -L, each side gets its own letter of the alphabet. And the three letters that we choose to use are a lowercase, always lowercase, a, B, and C. Now the order of these doesn't matter as long as C is always the hypotenuse. And so I'm going to label each of these in a color-coded fashion, but I'm going to go first and label C. So again, if I'm standing here, I'm looking across at the hypotenuse, that would be side C. And so it's important to understand again that it doesn't matter where A and B land, so for instance, A could be this side, and B could be that side, or A could be this side, and B could be that side. That doesn't matter, and I'm actually going to put the word or between them. So A or B, B or A. And so the color coding here matters. The A and the B that are blue go together. The A and the B that are green go together. You can't have two A's, and you can't have two B's. You have to have one A, one B, and one C. And again, the only thing that matters is that the hypotenuse is labeled C. So again, standing in the 90 degree corner here, we have looking across, this is going to be our side that is C. We could call this side A, we could call this side B, or we could call this side B, we could call this side A. Alrighty. Moving on to the next, standing in the corner, looking across, that's our hypotenuse, that has to be C. And this side could be A, this side could be B, or the alternative. This side could be B, this side could be A. Then lastly, standing in the corner, looking across, our hypotenuse has to be C. And we could make this side A if we so choose, and this side B. Or 
we could have this side be B and have this side be A. Again, you need one of each of the three. You need one A, one B, and one C. The placement of A and B don't matter. The placement of C does. C has to be the hypotenuse. Okay. Moving on to the next piece here, we see that the right triangles below were created using squares. And so basically we got some building blocks and stacked them in such a way that they form a right triangle. Now for each square, the area is labeled. So the squares that make the legs of the triangle have been labeled as A or B. And so remember that C is the only one that really matters. It has to be the hypotenuse. And so the square that makes the hypotenuse of these triangles is labeled C. We're asked to use those figures to fill in the following table. So it looks like the first one is done for us. We can see that the square that is a one by one, which is the square right here, one by one, has an area of two, or sorry, has a hypotenuse square with an area of two. And so we're just going to follow that basically throughout and fill this table in. We don't even have to do any thinking, we just are copying and pasting. So square A on figure two is four units, square B is one unit, square C is five units. The next one down we have square A is, or the next one over, uh, figure three up there on the right. A is four units, B is four units, C is 16 units. For figure four, we have the A square being one unit, the B square being nine units, and the C square being 10 units. I'm gonna pause here for a moment and ask you to take a look and see if there's any kind of a pattern you notice as we look across each of these rows at these squares. So take a moment if you haven't already, pause the video and look for a pattern horizontally through this. Okay, with that we're going to move on to figure five. We have the A square being nine, the B square being nine, and the C square being 18. And then lastly, we have a square that is 9 for the A square, 16 for the B square, and 25 for the C square. And so I asked you to pause and look for a relationship horizontally, like across here, across here, across here, and across here. Something, I think I made a mistake. I did. This right here should be an 8. Is the c square is 8 for that one, not 16. Typo. And so we're looking for patterns going across. 415, 448, 1910, and so on. And what I notice as I look across is that if I add the a square, the area of the a square plus the area of the b square is equal to the area of the C square. And another way to say that is that we need to remember that to find area of a square, we basically multiply the side by itself. And another way to say that is we would square the A. So the length of A times itself would form the area of the square. Plus B squared, meaning the area of B times itself would form the square. Let's use the last one as an example. We can see that for the A square, what would end up having to happen is that this side times this side would make the area of the square. And the same thing for the B square, this side times this side would make the area of the square. And so that would be the side length times itself, again, being A squared and B squared. And those two squares added together, again, 9 plus 16 makes 25. We're adding the squares up, we get the C square. And so the relationship that I'm seeing is that the a square plus the b square is equal to the c square. So moving on to the next, we're going to be looking at these, trying to figure out, uh, using a method, we're going to use a, the pattern we have noticed to uh, create a rule. The pattern we have noticed is a rule mathematicians call the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem states that all right triangles Follow the pattern a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where a, b, and c are side lengths of the triangle. 
And so we're going to be some make more sense as we do some of these. And so the way that this is going to go is we're going to be looking at the squares that we can find a side length for. I obviously don't know how long this side is because that's tilted or it's a diagonal. I don't know how to find diagonal measures yet in this class. And so we're going to label these squares. We'll call this our A square. We'll call this our B square. And we're going to find those areas. And so the A square is 2 by 2, giving me an area of 4. The B square is 1, 2, 3, 4 by 1, 2, 3, 4, giving me an area of 16. And the pattern that we noticed was that if we add the A square and the B square, that gives us the area of the C square. And so we're going to add 4 and 16. The area of that square right there would be 20. Moving on to the next, we have a square that is 1 by 1. 1 times 1 makes 1. This one's 1, 2, 3, 4 by 1, 2, 3, 4. That makes 16. Those two added together would mean that that square is 17. Figure 3, we have 2 by 2 makes 4. 3 by 3 makes 9. 9 plus 4 makes 13. So we can find the area of the C square by adding the areas of the A square and the B square. I'm going to go through these next ones a little bit faster. This is going to be 16. This is going to be 25. So that's going to be 41. This is going to be 2 times 2 is 4. 5 times 5 is 25. That's going to be 29. 1 times 1 is 1. 5 times 5 is 25. That's going to be 26. 3 times 3 is 9. 5 times 5 is 25. That's going to be 34. And so again, if we find the area of the A square, let's go back through here and label these. I'll call that my A square, that my B square. C square is always the one that is on the hypotenuse. So A, B, and C. And again, it does not matter which ones you label A and B, as long as the hypotenuse is always C. In this case, the orange square. All right. And that's going to be it for this lesson.